Hey, before we start, I got shows on sale. Melbourne starts next month. I'm performing from the 9th to the 24th, 21st of April, uh, every night except for Monday. After that, we've got Albury, we've got Sydney, Newcastle, Port Macquarie, Gold Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warrnambool, and Shepparton on sale now. Loosebeers.com. Get your tickets, and I'll see you at the show. Melbourne starts next month. Be there. Get them now. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode episode 328 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and no, absolutely not. No way. Not not a chance in hell, all right? If hell itself froze over, there would be absolutely zero opportunity, not even in all of the infinite possible parallel universes would you ever in your life but not just your life the lives of your descendants yeah not just your children or your children's children i'm talking about your entire bloodline from now until they evaporate into dust when the star when the sun that that heats our planet explodes and burns this this planet and every single living organism in this universe into dust From now until the end of time, there will not be a single, minute, infinitesimally small, tiny little chance of you getting an apology from me for missing an episode. No! All right? I'm getting messy. Oh, you broke your promise. You broke your promise at the start of the year. Hey! Hey, man. You're an idiot. You're dumb. If you message me, if you left a snide comment... If you DM me, oh, you broke your... You said there were going to be 52 episodes released on Sunday. No, I didn't. I said that I wasn't going to miss a single episode. And in that fucking rant, I clarified that every now and then, one would be late. I said that there would be 52 episodes this year. Now, did I want to promise that all of those episodes would land on a Sunday? Yes, absolutely, I did. In fact, that's what I was going to go with. But you know what is a really useful tool to everyone listening to this, all right? Not just not just me, not just you, everyone in the world. Male, female, somewhere in between. Fuck, we'll even throw in a few imaginary genders. Every single person listening to this, you have to know yourself. Under promise, over deliver. See, now, if I said in that rant, every episode will come out on time, I'll be sitting here groveling, apologizing, I'm so sorry, but I didn't. Because I know myself, and I know that every now and then, all right, I'm going to miss one. Now, have I released this late because I've been lazy? No. No, I haven't. Those days are over. Well, I was never lazy. I was very sick. And I didn't get much sympathy from you. In fairness, neither of us knew how sick I was. <laughs> but now that I'm well, geez, the excuses are slimming down, aren't they? That's what I really miss about being sick. If there's one thing that I miss about being sick, it's that if I'm late to something, if I don't take someone back, if I say I'm going to do something and then I don't show up, I don't get any sympathy anymore. Before, I used to get a, ah, it's all right, man, I know you're trying your best. Now, if I, sh- if I don't show up to something, people act like I'm rude. And I am, but I miss the sympathy. Now I don't have any excuse. You know what? If I had my time again, I never would have told anyone about my surgeries. I just would have told them about the illness, and then I would have just said, oh, yeah, I look different because I've been looks maxing. And then I would suddenly start to be on time to just about everyone's appointments, except for the people that I didn't really want to see in the first place. And then I could go, oh, sorry, I was... When it comes to you, I'm very ill. When it comes to this person, uh, I was just having a good day. And here's the thing. As someone who's actually been very ill and is now very healthy, I totally understand why people just make up that they have cancer. I get it. The sympathy's good. And you miss it when it's gone. And I didn't even I didn't even have cancer. I had something that people could barely understand. Oh, you sleepy? Oh, oh, you sleepy. Oh, that must be so hard. 
to be a sleepy guy with a fake job. I go to a building site every day. I got to wake up at six in the morning. My fucking hands hurt. I'm only 23. Yeah, well, fuck you, dude. You don't understand my illness the same way I don't understand your job, all right? Get those callous things away from me. I'm an artist. I don't want to be near you. <laughs> Working class fool. <laughs> I miss it. I'll, I'll be real, you know? I'm sure that all of those people who get to ring the bell in the cancer ward, they've got no fucking eyebrows. I bet they're really happy at the time. But, but, you know, 18 months after, they've got their hair back. They've got muscle definition. They don't look like, a, like someone shaved a heroin addict for a laugh. You know? They'll, tr they'll be like, oh, they'll be late on an assignment. They'll ask their professor for an extension. And he'll go, no. And they'll be like, what? You're saying no to an extension? Don't you know I have cat? Oh, that's right. I'm cured. I'm no longer going to die young. So what, I gotta, I gotta live the next fucking 70 years of my life with no sympathy? This is bullshit. It's enough to make you want to chop off a limb, to be honest. <laughs> Can we all just go back to the time where everyone was like, oh, it's all right, Lewis, we know you're trying your best. Where's that? Oh, what, now I gotta live up to standards that I set for myself and you publicly? <laughs> Fuck that. Guys, what I'm trying to say is I have AIDS <laughs> and, and I really, and, and it's a very special type of AIDS and it, and it makes me forget to respond to texts and um, show up late to things that I don't really want to be at. And also every now and then it will mean that uh, the podcast is late, and that's not my fault at all. Uh, it's because of the uh, new strain of AIDS that I have um, that I actually contracted from reading all of the fucking messages you losers sent me about the podcast being late and me breaking my promise. No, go and listen to it again, you idiot. All right, you gave me AIDS. That's how fucking dumb you are. I said I would do 52 episodes a year and I even ate, left myself a little caveat. I said sometimes they would be late because I travel and I've been traveling. I can't look. Full disclosure. Well, sorry. Absolutely no disclosure. I signed an NDA, but I was gone for about three weeks. All right. Doing <laughs> with something that you'll find. You're not going to find out until May, but I, I'll just, all I'll say about this is I've done it. The funniest thing I've ever done, it's done. And it's coming. All right? That's it. And it's a good one. And that's all I'll say. So shut up. The podcast is here. And yes, this is the entire episode. Because I have been... The last three weeks are under an NDA. I can't tell you anything about it. So for the next... What have we got? 30, 33 minutes, I'll be calling you an idiot. <laughs> Please support the show on Patreon. No, I'm I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm wearing I'm wearing pink. All right. The one thing, dude. I didn't have, I didn't have my phone. I had no contact with the outside world for like a month, pretty much. Um, the one thing that I managed to catch in a hotel bedroom in the in the like four hours that I actually got to turn on the television was this. I. Watch the Oscars. Do you know how fucking bored and desperate you have to be to watch the Oscars? No, I can't even tell you anything about it. The po I mean, Just use your imagination, all right? It's been three weeks and I'm sitting there and I'm watching the Oscars on a fucking hotel bedroom TV in a single bed. All right, that's how bored I was, but it'll be worth it. You'll see. I turn on the Oscars, all right, and... The reason I'm wearing pink is because, by God, Ryan Gosling fucking crushed it, didn't he? And I understand that this is late, but I've imagine I was just frozen for three weeks. I woke up and the first thing I saw was Ryan Gosling doing I'm Just Ken at the Oscars. And I watched pretty much all of the Oscars, so I saw all of the musical performances, every single one. He was the only guy... Or girl that was not a professional musician that performed. And when I tell you 
that he fucking smashed every single other musical performer out of the park. I mean, it wasn't even close. Becky G stood there. She's the size of a seven-year-old girl. Stood there wooden singing a song. I'd never seen her before. She was good. She wasn't bad. That's the thing. She didn't even suck. I saw the other musical performances and he was just better than all of them. Could you imagine like you're a, like that would be like me in 10 years. So I've been doing comedy for 20 years. I perform at the Oscars and then fucking some actor who's, who's an actor not known for comedy goes up there and does 10 minutes. That's just better than anything I've ever done. I'll be like, well, fuck, I quit. This is bullshit. Ryan Gosling, I know it. And he did it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. I had no idea. Oh, by the way, uh, Keelan's not here. I don't know if you've noticed. Anyway, <laughs> he died while I was away. It's tragic. Um, he's he's a better live singer than all of the actual musicians that were there. The guy was fucking dancing. Choreography was on point. He was fucking around with people in the audience. Improv skills. Just absolutely crushed it. Like, he did so well performing that. I was like, why is this guy acting at all? This dude needs to do a Hugh Jackman, but he can actually sing, and he's probably not gay. (laughs) You know, the Hugh Jackman is actually gay rumors. That's how you know... The guy's faithful to his wife. Like, just mega faithful. I feel like those are the only celebrity couples that get accused of being gay is when it's just a guy that just really fucking loves his wife. And just, like, very publicly and openly does not cheat on her. (laughs) You know, so that every other fucking agent and manager and actor who cheats on their wife is like, oh, he doesn't... He doesn't fuck other women. He must be gay. No, you're a piece of shit. But to be fair, he did do a world cabaret tour. So that's probably where it actually comes from. You know, I heard about that rumor way before it started going around on Twitter. I remember I was uh, hanging out with, it was the weirdest the weirdest fucking thing ever. I won't say names, but I was with this strange group of people that I just should not have been with. And they were trying to get like a reality TV show picked up. And it was all Australians, but there was one American manager and he was the most like archetypal caricature of a slimy, sleazy LA manager. Like his, like his vibes were tremendously off. He had the type of poisonous, dark, evil energy that only a manager from Los Angeles could ever produce. I've never, I had never felt that way in my life. I was like, maybe, fuck, I must've been like 22 or 23. I was pretty young. It was like 40 something. And I'd never felt that way in my life. There was just this evil, dark energy emanating from him. And I really didn't like it. And I didn't, I didn't know why. I didn't have I didn't have the life experience. Now I know it's because he was just like a poisonous social ladder climbing sociopathic narcissist like that whole fucking evil vibe that I that I hadn't experienced I'd only experienced once in my life uh before then and I hadn't seen again after him until I actually went to Los Angeles and I was like oh fuck everyone here is like that this sucks that city's a, sh- a, a an evil shithole. Don't go. Unless you get a really good movie deal. And even then, your knees might hurt to get it. Anyway, I was in the car with him and I didn't get a movie deal. So you know how the conversation went. <laughs> no, I won't put that on him. But fuck, I wouldn't be surprised. You know what I mean? And he was in the car and he was just talking about Australian celebrities. The, the, the Hugh Jackman. He's like, do you like Hugh Jackman? And like he, like I felt something was coming. I was like, yeah, he's, Wolverine was good. I, I think he's, I don't know. I had no opinion of him. I was like, yeah, he's pretty good. And he goes, you know, he's gay. I was like, oh, is he? Like, I didn't even, I didn't even know the guy was married. So I was like, oh, cool. Good on you. That's surprising. But I guess, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not surprised. So maybe there is some truth to it. If I was like, what? 
you know? I guess that's the problem with Hugh Jackman. I definitely didn't assume he was straight. I didn't think he was gay, but I wasn't surprised at all when someone told me that he was, and I didn't know that it was like a secret thing, you know? Did you know Hugh Jackman's gay? I was just like, oh, really? Cool. He's like, no, no, no. Like, secretly, he's in the closet. I was like, oh, right. He goes, he's married, but uh, it, the, the woman is a beard. And I was like, what's a, what do you mean? What's a, what's a beard? He looks like he doesn't need a beard. Look, have you seen the guy's sideburns? You know, those aren't, that's not makeup. That's not prosthetics. That's, that's real fucking mutton chops this man's growing. He said, no, 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 a beard is like when a gay person marries a woman to hide the fact, to obfuscate the idea that he's gay. And I was like, wow. That guy definitely didn't say obfuscate. That was my vocabulary kicking in. He was a fucking dumb cunt. Word of the day, obfuscate. And he goes, uh, yeah, he's gay. And he told me all this stuff. And I'm, and, and he's like, yeah, he's, he's, he, he st- secretly goes out and have sex with men. I'm like, how do you know this? And he goes, mate, everybody knows this. I'm like, yeah, but how do you know this? And he goes, oh, lots of people have told me. And I'm like, yeah, but has anyone seen him do it? And he's like, no. And I'm like, oh, okay, well. I don't, I can't form an opinion on this. And he was really disappointed about that. But take what that guy says with a grain of salt because uh, while I was with him before that car ride home, fuck, that's actually really suspicious that he drove me home. I didn't know that guy at all. I Like me now, I wouldn't have gotten his car. It was just me and him in, in the fucking car and he drove me all the way home and he had, I had like... That was really fucking weird, actually. And then after that drive home, I've got a six-hour gap in my memory. (laughs) No, I don't. He dropped me off. Maybe he was nice. Maybe he wasn't. The point is I wouldn't have gotten his car today. So I take the the Hugh Jackman, his gay rumors, with a huge grain of salt because not only was the guy, like, real poisonous and dark and evil, um, just purely based off vibes, he also, right, this is the type of dude that he is. One of the people there was, uh, was a parent and they had an autistic child that was nonverbal, right, didn't speak. And the kid kept farting. And the kid was like under 10, autistic, nonverbal, fucking horrific smell. Absolutely terrible. Now, if the kid was verbal and autistic, I might go, hey, buddy, Fart in another room. And if the kid was verbal and not autistic, I'd probably kick it in the head. You know, that's how it works. I'm a very progressive person. But the kid couldn't speak on the spectrum as fuck, so I just dealt with the smell. But every now and then, people would go, oh, fuck, what's that smell? And the manager guy would go, oh, it's the kid, he's farting. And then the mother would go, I'm so sorry, that does happen sometimes. I don't know how to stop it, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, oh, well, whatever. And this happened for fucking hours, all night. Just the most horrific stenches ever. Like, the smells were so bad that I started trying to convince myself that he was faking the autism. Just so I could get pissed off at the kid. But then... In the drive home, after about 40 minutes of this dude trying to convince me that Hugh Jackman is gay, he goes, how is that fucking stinky kid? And I was like, oh, come on, dude. You know, he's just a kid. He's he's autistic. He's nonverbal. Come on, man. That's a bit much. Because I knew the the people on, and I know how these people fucking operate. They they talk shit, and then they get you to agree, and then... And then they go back to the original people, and they go, did you know Lewis said this about your retarded son? And then I get bashed. So I was like, no, thank you. I don't want to do this. Uh, and I go, look, man, he's kidding. And then, he, and then he goes, just kidding, man. It was me farting the whole time. <laughs> and that's when I realized, oh, you're evil. You're an evil person. Imagine being a fucking 42-year-old grown man farting and blaming it on the retarded kid that can't speak. Actually, the more I, the more I listen to myself and think about the sentence that I just said, the more I'm like, nah, that's actually fucking hilarious. <laughs> Dude, imagine doing a doing a fart that just smells like shit. You know when a fart is a fart and it's kind of gross, but it's a little bit funny, and, and then there are other farts that just smell like shit? Like, oh, dude, 
That one smelled like feces, brother. It was one of those. That's actually pretty good to like fart and then blame it on someone who can't speak. You know, that's like seeing a blind person and giving them the finger in front of everyone. Now that's just like reprehensible behavior, like farting and then blaming it on the the the, the autistic child of the client you're trying to manage. <laughs> that's the other thing, the fucking client. So that makes that makes me think that because it, it seemed apparent that they were working together for months and months. So maybe this dude had been blaming his farts on this kid for like six months, and the mother was the mother was like, "Oh man, my kid can't stop farting, but it's only ever around this guy." My, I guess my kid really doesn't like this other dude's vibes and because he can't speak, he decides to defend himself like a skunk. You know? Maybe she changed his diet and everything, poor kid. Now, every time the kid does do a fart that's not really heinous, she'll be thinking of the big smelly ones she, he was doing at business meetings. Thinks it's some kind of spectrum condition. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is... Um, the podcast is here and it is on a Monday. And for that, I, I look, I don't apologize because, because I never said that I wasn't going to do that. But I will say it's not my ideal scenario. It's not what I envisioned. All right. But it does happen. And the point is there'll be 52 fucking episodes. Not fucking episodes. Like there's, there's never going to be an episode where like I'm ha- having sexual intercourse. Although there is one that's coming out that's, that's heavily, doesn't matter. You'll see. Uh, but, it, but it won't, you know, it is for YouTube. What I'm saying is there'll be 52 and I will endeavor my very best to get them out on Sunday. All right. And don't, don't get me fucking started on, oh, oh, the podcast is late. Don't, if it's Sunday, don't you ever, I got a few messages on Sunday saying it's late. Hey man. Hey brother. Hey buddy. Look, bitch. I never said it was Sunday morning. If I said, welcome to the Sunday morning podcast. Absolutely, send me a DM. But Sunday's 24 hours, you dumb cunt. Ah, I shouldn't have said that word. Now the podcast is demonetized. You see what you made me do? You like that one? The fucking, the the, the abusive, You look what you made me do. <laughs> you didn't de- do your homework and now I've thrown beer on your mother. Look what you made me do. That's your fault. Anyone having flashbacks? Um. All right, what did I want to talk about? here oh all these people were upset at ryan gosling going oh i'm just ken performing i'm just ken at the oscars that just shows that the people didn't understand the theme of the of the movie and it wasn't even nominated for best picture and margot robbie didn't win best act hey 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 it's a fucking ad for dollies that's the movie and i enjoyed it i loved it I liked the message. I understood the message. I I thought Margot Robbie crushed it. I thought all the women in the film were great. I thought Ryan Gosling uh, was amazing. But it's an ad for dollies. So it doesn't get to be nominated for Best Picture. And it certainly doesn't get to win. Because at the end of the day, it's a fucking advertisement for dollies that little girls play with. So as good as it can be, at the end of the day, it's an advertisement for dollies. Now, is it the best advertisement for dollies that the toy company Mattel has ever made? Absolutely. But is it still an advertisement for dollies? Yes. So it doesn't get to win Best Picture at the fucking Oscars. The end. What are they going to do? Not acknowledge that Ryan Gosling sung his way into being the main character of that film? I love that about the Barbie film as well, is that unfortunately, all of the scenes with Ryan Gosling, with Ken, are so funny and so fucking good that he just became the main character of of the film, even though he definitely isn't. That's how everyone left the film going. Like, people who liked that were like, oh my God, Ken, Ryan Gosling... They were so fucking good. But everyone who didn't like that still left with, fuck, he shined. Shit. This is supposed to be about women. No, it's an advertisement about dollies. And you can find some some empowerment in that and you can really enjoy it 
and you can love all of the songs. And look, the set design was incredible. The costumes were amazing. The acting was great. The dialogue was hilarious. The way that it was directed was was fucking phenomenal. And 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 all of those things are true. And they all live inside of all of these compl- compliments and and truths and um and rave reviews. They all go inside a nice little box that packages up, and then I put a sticker on it that says "Advertisement for Dollies" because that's what it fucking is. All right, Transformers isn't gonna win Best Picture at the Oscars because it doesn't matter how good you make a Transformers fucking movie. At the end of the day, it's an advertisement for fucking robots for little boys to play with. Okay? All right? If you can look me in the eyes and tell me that you think that the Barbie movie should have got best picture, then you also need to tell me 100% sincerely that someone could make a Transformers movie so good (laughs) that, that it could win an Oscar. And I can't even say that sentence without laughing. And I, and I, don't get me wrong, the Barbie movie, better movie than the best Transformers movie. What I'm saying is, honestly, can you tell me that some director and some writer and some actors, some cinematographers, that some of these people could get together the greatest minds on planet Earth, try and fucking tell me with a straight face that a Transformers movie would ever in the history of the world have a shot at winning an Oscar. You've got even less of a chance for Transformers to win Best Picture than you do from getting an apology from me for releasing an episode like I said I would. Fuck you, all right? It's an advertisement for dollies. Um, I, I don't really know what this episode is about, man. It's, uh, but, but we're halfway through, so we're actually doing really well. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Guys, this is really important. And this is something that I feel very passionate about. And this is, this is, you know what? Just when I was thinking, what is the episode about? A light bulb has gone off in my head. And I've just worked out that this is not only what this episode is about. It's what is my life about? Like, what am I here on this earth to do? And I'll tell you what I'm here to do. What I am... Uh, What I am here to do is, um, let me tell you what I'm here to do. What what I'm here to do is, um, is, uh, is talk about manscaped.com with code, use the code Spears for 20% off and free shipping. Um, oh, I've opened the St. Patrick's Day female ad copy. Well, you guys better buy the razor because I... Thought that I clicked on male, but uh, it seems like I've clicked on female. Uh, <clears throat> intro. Top of the morning to you. Oh, this is also St. Patrick's Day. This is the St. Patrick's Day women's read of manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. For, for God's sake, you better fucking... Top of the morning to you. This episode is brought to you by the St. Patrick's Day Shamrock Shavers. Manscaped. This year, don't just chase rainbows, make your own pot of gold and have the man in your life (laughs) groom his little leprechaun with the leaders in below-the-kilt care. Gee, this is good, isn't it? Say goodbye to his clover forest with Manscaped TM's Lawnmower 5.0 and let his confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and have him join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped TM. Head over to manscaped.com and use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. For the love of God, if you want the ad reads to continue to be funny, this is the deal. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS. Uh, Talking points. Do not read. Host to share a funny grooming misadventure or life before the golden touch of manscape. I did that last episode. Let's let's see about this. Um, ever since my man has used manscaped, I can proudly say that I found my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and boy, does it taste sweet. Use code SPEARS. Meet your new lucky charm for St. Patrick's Day, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, Ultra, Ultra. Um whether he's whether whether your man is sculpting his beard or cleaning up his neckline these are always the right tools for the job i know that's what i like my boyfriend to use 
Uh, and now remember, use uh, call to action required. Uh, get 20% off and free shipping with code SPEARS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with code SPEARS at manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's Day, make sure your man's little hairy leprechaun is luckier than ever with Manscaped. All right. We got that done. Use the code for the love of God, because if you don't, they won't be coming back. And that's the last one that we agreed on for now. So code SPEARS, 20% off manscaped.com free shipping oh fuck look i hope i don't get in trouble for that and you know what if uh if you don't if you don't listen to me um i will (laughs) all right um what am i looking at my phone for i wrote down what i wanted to talk about dude i hope you guys uh i hope i hope uh, you're really getting onto this no phone thing like i am because it's amazing. One good thing about this thing that I did was they took our phones for like three weeks, and uh, I have I didn't miss them at all. I've loved I've I've like loved just being like I'm just going to try and continue this and use it as little as possible. Uh, and then one day I just sat in bed scrolling for uh, eight hours and went to sleep. So it's it's still a struggle, but I I'm a, a lot better today. Um, all right. Uh, oh, dude, I had the most man. My I love my dog. I love her very much. She's sitting there. She's asleep somehow. Uh, I feel like the only, like for whatever reason, me screaming for an hour is just soothing for her. Um, but I took her to the to I do I do riding every morning, and I uh, went to the went to a cafe. And uh, normally she's great because we do it every single day, and uh, she's really good. That's how you that's how you train a dog. You just like expose them. It's called socializing. People think that socializing a dog means getting them to run up to every other fucking dog and say hello no you're you're an idiot actually in your defense moron it's a bad word it shouldn't be socializing it should be exposing that's what it should be is you need to expose your dog to the world like every day just take them take them fucking especially when you get them at first whether they're a rescue or a new one like mine was a a, a puppy and a rescue so but she had a lot of anxiety because she came from a bad breed or in a bad place um but uh, one thing that I did really well was I just, every morning I just took her wherever I was going, everywhere, put her in the car, take her on tour, take her to the beach, take her to uh, restaurants and cafes. We took her into the city. We walked her around at night. We had her in hotels. Like wherever I was, we tried to bring her when she was young, when she was still a baby and just show her fucking everything. Cause she was a very fearful dog and she really didn't like new things. And she's still a little bit like that. She still has some anxiety. Um, but for the most part, when she's out in the world, that, that's actually seems to be when she feels most safe is when she's outside of the house. A lot of things scare her in this house. She's got laser pointer syndrome because um, <clears throat> someone used a laser pointer with her and it just broke her brain. Don't ever use a laser pointer with your dog. Um, and now she's scared of shadows and moving lights and stuff like that. So if you turn a light on when she's not expecting it, it'll scare her. If a bird flies past and casts a shadow on the wall, she'll bark at it. Things like that. But... That's really only inside the house. When she's outside the house, because we do that so often and we've done that since she was a baby, she actually feels a lot more comfortable. However, I was at the cafe and I'm doing my writing, thinking about what I'm gonna what I'm gonna say on this podcast, and I've I've checked off most everything. Call the listener an, an idiot for 23 minutes and then yell about the Barbie movie uh, and the Oscars, despite it being like a whole week um, late. So check those two off. And then, oh, I've written here as well. Um, do a Manscaped ad, but instead of um, opening up the the document for men, like they wanted you to, accidentally open up the one for women. And instead of just closing it and opening up the correct one, just read the one for women uh, as if you were a woman with a boyfriend because that's a good bit is what I've written here. Um, so I've done that, but anyway, so I'm writing, I'm writing down, uh, you know, pretend to be a woman for the ad read and, uh, then an actual woman, right? So jealous. She comes down the stairs with a, with a little toddler son and, um, Bobby's under the table, my dog and I'm riding and I'm just like in my own world. I'm going, make sure you talk about having a boyfriend. That's a pretty good bit. Um, I didn't, I don't plan the ad reads cause if I do, they're not funny. Uh, and that's, that's why you're going to fucking, anyway, by it. He's got his amazing dog. Um, the dog, which she's never done before, just loses it at this toddler. Like barking 
at the at the toddler. The toddler fucking rightfully so. She's a forty two kilo dog. She's fucking tall, huge dog, scary, big bark, and she's using this scary bark, which she never does. Barking at this fucking toddler, I'm gonna go. I'm going. Oh my god. I've I've got a. I've got a I've got a um, princess moment here. You know, you know those dogs. My my dog Princess wouldn't hurt a fly. And you look at Princess, and it's like, ah, oh, I don't hurt flies because I only bite kids. You know those dogs. I thought I had that on my hand. Anyway, turns out the kid was holding a balloon. <laughs> Bobby was just terrified of the fucking balloon, just freaking out. And I'm like, oh my god, thank God she wasn't actually barking at the kid. And that's why we keep her on a leash. Only time she's ever done that. I fucked so embarrassing. Um, so yeah, that's the type of dog that I have. Lovely, sweet girl. But if you have um, a balloon, she'll kill you. <laughs> no, I don't think she wanted to bite the kid. I think she was just trying to tell the balloon to go away. That's the thing about the, my dog is is she's not scared of anything that could actually do her harm. You know, like you could you could you could throw a brick at her and hit her, and then the next time you throw a brick at her, she wouldn't she wouldn't be scared at all. But God forbid if you use if you use some fucking tinfoil around her. That's spooky. That is scary. Um anyway, the TikTok ban. That's the first piece of news that I got after I came out of this bubble of no phone. I'm like, all right, I've been away for three weeks. It's time to put my head down, start pumping out those stand-up clips. Let's go hard on TikTok, see what we can make of it. And they go, oh, by the way, we're banning it. That's so, uh, it's such an interesting one to me because I think that, I think that they will ban it. I think they will. Uh, they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to go, oh, you can't operate in the States. Either you have to sell to an American company or we won't let you use it. And, uh, China has gone, oh, we won't allow a sale. But even if China did allow a sale, I think America, this is, this is like kind of like America's, oh, you're actually not that big of a deal moment in the grand scheme of things, at least with this app. Because I found out that America is only 10% of the user base on that app. So it's like the choice is you have to sell your entire business that's really new and still growing and just starting to make money. You have to sell it because 10% of your user, your user base is like, oh, we don't want to let you have the app in our country. It's a no-brainer. Even if they weren't a Chinese-owned company, if it was just like a privately owned for-profit company run out of Europe or whatever, they'd be like, yeah, no. We we can afford to lose 10% of our fucking customers. See ya. Because we at the end of the day, we all we all know that Gen Z is just gonna download Express VPN on their phone and just fucking get around the ban and use TikTok anyway. No. Um but it is it's such a it's such a fucking insight into um like American politicians and, and just how in the pocket they are of uh, competing social media businesses and media companies because it's not just Meta and Google and Twitter and all the other social media websites and the internet in general that doesn't like TikTok because they're such a big competitor. It's also like every media outlet, every mainstream news outlet, Fox, CNN, the companies that own them, uh, plus also giant fucking conglomerate businesses don't like TikTok because what TikTok is enabling people to do, um, <clears throat> myself included, is build businesses and get the word out and escape the narrative of these other mainstream media businesses. You know, just how anti-war and anti-propaganda the youth has become as a direct result of TikTok is fucking crazy you know it's uh just how uh how many small businesses that are now competing with giant mega global corporations that have been created purely because of tiktok is crazy just how much damage tiktok has done to youtube to uh instagram to every other social media platform but also to all of the mainstream media networks is uh it's fucking crazy and I hear what you're saying. Oh, yeah, but it's a Chinese company and they're stealing their data. It's like, I agree for sure. I, I bet that's happening. But the way to stop that from happening is not to ban the app. It's to actually build laws 
that prevent that from happening and enable the government to audit social media companies to make sure that they're following this rule that you create to protect the data of people from your company, country. Because here's the, the fucking insane thing about all of this is that, sure, I agree with you. I think there's something shady going on. And I imagine that data from TikTok in America is going to, to uh, bite dance the Chinese company, which is going to fucking the Chinese government. Absolutely. 100% with you there. Absolutely. And yes, there's a lot of damage that is done to minors because of TikTok. And there's a lot of damage that is done to people because the the guidelines and, and protections for children isn't isn't properly there. However, guess what, buddy? In terms of damage to children, way worse on Instagram, way worse on Facebook, way worse on Discord, way worse on, on the social media platforms in it that that are American owned. By far, absolutely, especially Discord, especially Instagram. Just have a look at every fucking under twelve influencer run by their parents on Instagram. Fucking have a look who follows them. All right. That being said, okay, even you take that out of it, if we're just looking at data, and if we're just looking at data privacy, and not just that, if we're just, like, take data privacy out of it, if we're just looking at keeping data from Americans away from China, do you know what all of the social media companies do? They all sell data to Chinese companies, every single one of them, and not just social media companies. This is... Uh, Walmart, this is uh, fucking every commerce business, every just business that sells products, everyone that collects data from fucking emails to phone numbers to purchase history to mood to political affiliation, fucking everything, anyone that collects data in any way, shape or form, all of that data gets sold on to businesses that sell that shit on to Chinese businesses eventually. It gets bought or it gets stolen. And none of these fucking politicians are actually passing data protection laws that would stop every single business in the world from selling their shit to Chinese companies, which are owned by the Chinese government. So this isn't about protecting privacy and protecting data because it doesn't do that. It just bans a popular app that politicians don't like because their donors don't like it. And they also don't like TikTok because it fucking completely busts their ability to control the narrative. TikTok has enabled regular people who have no no following at all to go viral with an opinion about politics, about business, about war, about uh, global conflicts. Like, really, do you think that all of this stuff about Israel and Palestine would have gotten so big and uh, and and so out of hand in terms of what the government's narrative would like it to be if it weren't for TikTok. Like, could, could you fucking imagine if 9-11 happened while TikTok was around and then they were like, all right, we need to go and invade these Middle Eastern countries. I don't think that it would have been anywhere near as successful. It still would have happened because the government doesn't listen to these people. But I think that it would have fucking got reined in a lot quicker than it did if regular people <coughs> people had the ability to fucking post from these war zones and go look at what's happening look how fucking terrible this is and then if the people back in the states could go fuck i lost all my kids to this shit look how this is affecting me or re- soldiers could return home and go look how much this war fucked me up here's what i actually think about it i didn't think we were doing the right thing could you fucking imagine if the 9-11 and the wars that happened from it, the invasions that happened from it, which we all found out were fucking illegitimate and bullshit invasions that didn't achieve anything other than fucking causing chaos and disruption in the region and getting oil for us. <clears throat> if that shit happened and TikTok was around, it still would have happened, but I think it would have been reined in much quicker. Because I think that at the end of the day, end of the day, is the biggest danger to the establishment and these are politicians than uh, than anything, and they're just trying to fucking mask that and cover cover up their actual motive, which is to silence people and to stop uh, and to regain control of narrative. Uh, they're they're masking that desire with this bullshit fake thing of oh, we want to protect privacy. It's like okay. 
you really want to protect privacy, you could absolutely build laws that uh, make it impossible for data to go to China. It's so possible. You could set up audits. You could put government employees inside um, businesses that are owned by foreign states because at the end of the day, man, this is a fucking global world that we live in. Some other country is going to invent an app that the entire world uses. And it might not be China next time. It might be a fucking European country. It might come from Australia. It won't. We have no talent here and anyone with talent leaves like I intend to. But you understand what I'm saying. Like uh, <clears throat> the only way to protect data is to actually build robust <clears throat> laws that are crafted with experts in data protection and social media and then actually fucking enforce. But that's not how the states work. And uh, the two parties won't fucking agree on anything there. So the only thing that they can agree on is fucking just banning an app that, let's be real, all of these politicians have been humiliated on at least once in their fucking way too long careers. You know, why are we getting fucking 60 to 80 year old men and women who can barely operate a fucking smartphone? These cunts are so old, they're, a lot of them, more than one of them is dying in office. They're the ones who are going to decide on what app people should be able to use. And let me be real, I agree with the data and privacy concerns. But this is not how you fucking solve it. This doesn't solve anything because at the end of the day, the Chinese government and Chinese businesses are buying all of the fucking data from Facebook and Meta and Google anyway. It's not being protected. Um, so yeah, that's what I think. And yes, I am biased because TikTok helps me sell a lot of tickets. <laughs> but you know what? That's a good thing. I don't know. <clears throat> End of the day, it won't change much for me, I think. Um, because, I mean, it doesn't change anything because if it gets banned in the States, it, it'll still be operational here. Who am I fucking kidding? The minute it gets banned in the States, Australia will be like, me too. Oh, we, don't, we don't like it, me too. You know? I don't know. I just think it's like, fuck, dude. If you, if you want to actually want to protect data, there's, there's much better ways to do it. Um... Or, I mean, why don't we just do what China does and just, sit, like, fucking steal the business? Seize it. You know? We're going to play that game. Just fucking seize the whole IP and the business and the technology and fucking rebrand it. Call it call it uh, Talk Tick and go put a fucking American flag on it. And then every, every single video you'll see is like, here's why we, we need to go to war. Um, All right. I think that's the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh... And uh, next one will come out on Sunday and it'll it'll actually include some relevant up-to-date shit because I'm actually back and I'm in the real world. I'm going to uh, continue on for the Patreon version of the podcast, which will be up in a couple of days. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you uh, subscribe, support me on Patreon and come and see me live, lewspears.com. The Melbourne shows are happening in a month. I'm very, very excited for it. So Melbourne, I got 12 shows. Uh, if you want those Fridays and Saturdays, it's time to book tickets right now because the promo is about to go hard and those are the first ones to go. Um, it's a brilliant show. I just did a 12 show. I did, just did 12 shows in Perth and I fucking crushed it. People loved it. And I really, really, really cannot wait to, for uh, you to see the show in Melbourne. So come see me, loosebeers.com. And I got uh, every other city and uh, state on sale now, except for Brisbane, but that is coming. All right, loosebiz.com. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.